Hello, everyone. Welcome to 50 Question Friday for, let's see, what is it? June 12th of 2020. So, yeah, this marks our 11th 50 Question Friday. Hey, Sinan, good morning, and Pam. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody being here today. Um, and let's see. We will start, as always, with a quick meditation into the heart space. Pardon me, I'm a little scruffy today. I'm feeling like it's Friday, finally, after a few months. All right, so let's take that quick journey into the sacred space of the heart. Close your eyes, if you wish, and just putting your attention to your heart, to your physical heart that light that's within your heart, your soul's light, your soul's fire, expand that down and connect into the heart of the earth. And then take in that deep breath, breathing in that energy of the earth right into the heart. And next, Let's connect into source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. And let's breathe in that energy of creation right into the heart. In that third breath, breathing in both earth and sky, bringing those together with you within the heart. And then you become that column of light that is grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. So if you would, just drop your questions over here into the question tab this morning. And again, if you're watching this recorded, you are welcome to email the questions in. Uh, we send out a newsletter once a week with the information on the upcoming webinar. And you're welcome to simply reply to that email and uh, we'll get your questions in queue. All right, so Jill asks, can the two inch golden fire generator, that, the thicker gauge one, can that be felt as strongly on the body as the four inch heavy duty golden fire ring? Um, so that's kind of, um, to me, feeling the thicker golden fire ring, which I don't have one here in the two inch generator. To me, I almost can feel the golden fire ring more on the physical body. I know that if you're doing work on the physical body, that four inch golden fire ring, that heavy duty one, or that heavy duty regeneration ring, either one of those heavier gauge rings, you can feel in the physical a lot more. Now for the for my personal, I can feel actually the generator a little bit more than the ring. Um, but every person is going to perceive, perceivably feel that energy a little bit different from each and every tool. Um, and then Sinan asks, which tool resonates most with the quantum heart essence in your opinion? So the tools that resonate most with the quantum heart are all of the pyramid tools that we create. Um, those are the ones that are carrying that, that energetics of the quantum heart. Um, the closest thing that we would have that holds that quantum heart, that's not a pyramid, it would be the infinite light pendant, but, you know, and the, and the Taurus pendant. But really that, and to go on to answer the rest of your question here, Sinan, is are you going to update the Athuri templates of tools soon for Quantum Heart? And, and that's it too, is that, you know, I believe that eventually all of the tools are going to hold that space for that Quantum Heart field. Um, you know, it, it's an evolutionary process with these tools and with us and with the earth. Um, everything, you know, has to be within that same frequency and vibration for us to keep evolving the tools. And so, yes, I totally believe that we'll be able to anchor in that quantum heart energy into more tools. 
Right now, the latest one we have it anchored into is the, the little Organite Pyramids. Uh, and then Jill asks, can I wear a Golden Fire Coil at the same time as a Golden Fire and Light Wand? Yes, you know, wearing any of the different pendants together brings about a little bit of a different subtle energy. Um, and so we do encourage people to play with the different tools and to start adding them together because they can create a little bit of a different field and it may create just that specific opening that, that you need most. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that put the little infinities with um, the gateway pendants. And a lot of people really like that combination. And using the, the coil and the wands together have always been a really fantastic thing. Um, if I have a coil and the wand here. So you can actually slip um, that, that coil. A lot of people have slipped that wand right inside of the coil and have used them in that fashion. So they do all work well together all the tools they will harmonize and amplify each other um, let's see and then alfredo is asking what's your experience so far with the silver taurus i felt some changes in my body quite a bit and i am more with myself also have you seen Dwayne gardner lately I had a dream about him recently, but not sure what he's up to. <laughs> so Dwayne Gardner, Organite Austin, as so many of us know and love him by, is um, he started making his Black Sun Organite again. Um, and that's that's one pendant that I really like. Um, not too fond of a lot of Organites, but um, the Black Sun pendants that Organite Austin makes are pretty phenomenal. And he actually shares that recipe out there for people um, to use. And I believe that's in his New Science or Rain book where he shares that recipe. Um, so the Silver Taurus, you know, I, I love my Silver Taurus. What I'm noticing about it is... Um, it is more heart expansive. Um, there very is that there is a lot of heart within these Tauruses, um, and you know it. I, I can never tangibly say what any of the pendants are doing for me anymore, because um, and I'm only wearing the silver ones these days. Well, except for some little prototypes here, but. You know, they, they keep me connected and in that higher space. I notice if I forget to put a pendant on during the day, um, I just get more mundane in the head, um, just more self-absorbed and involved in 3D life. That's, that's what I notice when I'm not wearing my Taurus pendant. Uh, Sinan asks, do you think that Shungite's interaction with tensor rings is more intense than other crystals? Um, you know, no, I think that's kind of a personal, personal thing. If, um, if Shungite interacts more with the rings than other crystals, because to me, I, when I can feel a crystal, like let's say, um, a pink danburite crystal, one of my favorite crystals, pink danburite. When I add a ring to that, it, it is really intense for me because that is one of my favorite crystals. I resonate with that one greatly. And so when I add a ring with shungite, it's not, you know, it, it's definitely not as intense for me as using it with, with some of the other crystals. So again, it kind of goes to what it is that you resonate most with at any given moment um, is, is what you're going to feel the most. That's what you're going to be drawn to. So, um, yeah, my answer would be it is a very individual thing there. Um, and then see, Jill asks, does the Infinity Ring have any connection or attunement to reincarnation? Um, no, there's no there's no connection with the the infinity that we've consciously created with with reincarnation now all of our tools are bringing in our light more and our light are simply little particles 
of light, which are these little particles of our soul, which happen to be pieces of us as we exist throughout all time, space, dimensions, incarnation. And so all the tools actually have something to do with reincarnation in that it is connecting us to our light, to where our soul exists beyond time. Uh, Renard asks, um, and hey Renard, I've constructing the tools lately and I did an intense cord cutting with the harmony ring. I was led to the galactic qubit and constructed it as a coil. I usually wear my infinite light pendant. Do your tools harmonize with tools constructed by others? Yes, our, our tools very much, the ones that we create here at Twisted Sage Studios, will harmonize with any other energy or energy tools out there. Because um, that's just part of what the, the tensor fields do is they, they harmonize. And so they harmonize with things that are non-beneficial even, like electromagnetics that are harmful to us, like on your cell phones. They harmonize with that. Um, and they harmonize that energy. So, you know, and that's what I've always said for years, that if you have a, a little organite pyramid in your home and it just doesn't feel the same anymore, add a tensor ring to it and it will harmonize that energy. And that's the same with um, all kinds of frequency devices, radionics, um, everything. Let's see, and the, another question, you mentioned that tensor rings, uh, the earth resonance ring, has the frequencies of all crystals, including all metals. Yes, so when, when we first started to find out about the etheric templates was with the galactic ascension ring, and then it moved on to the harmony ring. Um, we, we first started to infuse the copper wire with water um, the energetics of water. And I would actually take a handful of crystals because we, we were looking for to create a ring that would clear energetic implants. And so I went to somebody uh, locally who deals with crystals. They have a crystal shop and they worked with energetic implants. And I was like, okay, what of your crystals can clear these energetic implants? And so they gave me a list of crystals that still hangs on the back wall by above the sink and I got a handful of those crystals. And then we were also told to use water, to infuse water into the, in the frequencies and properties of water into the copper. So I would have this 25 foot long twisted copper wire, a handful of crystals under a faucet, and I would pull that wire through that water in those crystals and sit there and consciously imbue all of that into the wire. And that was how we first started to put in the frequencies and properties of plants, crystals, water, um, is in that fashion. And then it got to be to where we were like, well, why don't we just take this, this energetics, and put them into the etheric template because everything is energy and that's actually what we're doing is we're just embedding it into the copper this way through intent and attention, or else we can just put it into the templates and they'll hold it. So that's what we ended up doing was we ended up working with the consciousness of all the crystals, minerals, the consciousness of water, fire, ether, um, and the consciousness of the plants. And we brought in to that holding space, the etheric templates, the frequencies and properties of all the plant crystal mineral kingdoms of this planet. And then we also started working with the rays of light because I've been working with the rays of light since, you know, for the past 10 years as well. And so we brought in those rays of light into there. And then we've um, continued on with that. And anytime we learn new processes and modalities, like our good friend Jean Jeanette, who wrote the book Soul Body Fusion, we put Soul Body Fusion into the harmony rings. Um, and so all of that went into the harmony rings and then it also because the golden fire contains everything the harmony does the golden fire now contains all of that now the earth resonance ring 
the Earth Resonance Ring, um, we co-created this with the gals at Dancing with Water. We co-created this energetically. It is our 333 megahertz ring, which holds templates very well. This 333 does. So we created um, this water ring, not with all the different modalities and things that we learned along the way, but just the basic earth properties, plant, crystal, minerals. Um, that's what is in the, the earth resonance rings. But the golden fire rings will contain all that other stuff, as do the harmony rings. Well, let's see. Jill asks, how do you how did you meet Talk? Where does he come from? And what does he look like? Um, yeah, so my sister started working with these blue winged plasma beings, this master being that came in to assist her in healings at some time. This was about two years ago or so. And and this blue plasma being would just come in and when when Brenda was in that space and doing healing work. And she was having problems, you know, if she would have a problem with, with getting something to clear up for somebody, um, talk would come in and offer his assistance. And so that's when we first started working with talk. And then it was interesting because around that time, and I didn't, we didn't put two to two together around that time, I started to see myself as an aspect of me as a blue plasma being with wings, you know, um, you know, no fingers, no facial features, just a plasma being. And, um, and it's interesting. That's actually my Facebook profile picture for a little while. And so once, um, once we started to work more with, with these blues and, and the blues are simply just a group of beings, um, that are in a dimension actually in a universe that is not within duality and it's a quite a concept of universes that are out of duality because duality is the only time that you have things that are non-beneficial um the good the bad um in this universe of duality it's hard to trust a lot of things because usually there is good and bad with it. And once you step into these spaces that are out of duality and even the higher dimensions within this universe, but that could be argued that you're actually going into another universe. Once you get into these higher dimensions, that all universes are the same, all interlocked right here, but it's just the dimensional layer that determines what universe you're in. Yeah. Who knows? But anyway, once you step into these other universes, it's where some of these are out of duality. They are in that neutrality. And that is where talk and these master beings come from. And there's a lot of different beings that have been coming in that are in these other places out of duality. Um, because it's, it's just time. It's time for, for us to step out of duality. Um, and what does he look like? Yeah, just that blue plasma being with wings is is how he presents to me. But they'll they'll present in so many different ways. There's there's all these different beings that um, basically it goes through a filter before we recognize it from from our perspective. Um, it goes through kind of a filter system in that it presents to us in a way that is the most beneficial for us to see that. Um, you know, and, and the soul is a part of that, of, of allowing in and presenting of things in certain ways. So just like how we can all see Thoth or Toth, however you say his name, we call him Thoth. However you see that Ascended Master from the Atlantean Egyptian times, he presents in various different ways to people. Uh, let's see. And finding the most recent questions here. All right. Okay. Pardon me. I kind of skipped around a question, so I'm getting back into our list of questions here. Um, Sinan asks, which tool is best for creating a sacred grid dome for you? So creating grids, 
uh, these guys are so flipping phenomenal. And these are something that I'll talk about a little bit today are the quantum grid points. For creating grids, there's nothing quite like using any of the pyramids. These just happen to be the least expensive. You don't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of eight foot pyramids to grid your property when you can use a bunch of these little guys to grid your space. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more here um, about doing these grids here at the at the end of our at the end of our session here. Um, and then Christine asks, are you going to be doing a webinar for the quantum grid point? So I purchased one for a friend, one to help her understand it better than my comment, awesome stuff happens. <laughs> so we'll eventually do a webinar on these. There, The whole thing is still shifting and moving and we still want other people to have some more experiences with them to share. That way we can actually do a better webinar that is educational in the ways that we're using them. And I have not got to go out and actually do the field work with these yet, which I intend to here in two weeks. I'm going to be traveling to Washington to the uh, a private version of the Fairy Congress. And we're going to, it's more like a spiritual family gathering. And so I'm going to be doing gridding all the way to Washington State. And that's and I can't wait to do that so that I can get the field experience, Christine, so that we can share a little bit more about our experiences and actually do a webinar on the quantum grid points. But we will discuss some of it today. Um, and then Jill asks, is this correct? The golden fire and light wand contains the Teotihuacan measure, which is the harmony. Yes, that is correct. The, I don't know where my wand went to. I have tools scattered out all over here. The, the golden fire and light wands, the, the brass rods, um, there's two measurements in there. One of them is the golden fire and one of them is the Teotihuacan unit, the standard Teotihuacan unit. And which the standard Teotihuacan unit is the one that makes a harmony ring when you use it in a tensor ring length. Um, and then then Jill goes on to ask, um, so the harmony measure contains the galactic measures of third template and the galactic automatically activates the Merkaba. <clears throat> so yes, actually the harmony ring does contain everything that we created with the galactic etheric templates. When we created the, the galactic ascension rings, um, it was the galactic ring the measurement and then we created the ascension ring template to add into that now we have not updated that etheric template in years um, but that etheric template of the galactic was the base and went into the harmony ring so everything that the galactic ascension ring contained the harmony ring contains and yeah we haven't made a galactic ring in a few years they're still a phenomenal ring um, we just never updated the etheric templates. There's, they, the galactics have a certain bandwidth of frequency and the harmony has a certain bandwidth of frequency and we just wanted to work with that harmony because it was a little bit more all-containing and expansive. Um, so then the, the final part of that question for it at automatically activating the Merkaba. So that was one thing that the galactic ascension ring that we were really pushing out there at the time is how that field holds space for your Merkaba to be reactivated. And yes, that is true with the, the harmony rings and the golden fire ring is that it holds that space, that remembrance for that Merkaba field to be reactivated. It was really a big deal at that time because the Merkaba activation has really, it, it's, it's had a huge trajectory in the, the ease of, of reactivation. Um, when I first started doing the Merkaba activations in 2011, we had to do the mudras, the breath work. It was a big process, but even then that was a huge jump forward in the Merkaba activation to where it would stay permanent after doing mudras and breath work from the heart space only once. Prior to that, you had to do mudras and breath work every day for two years for that field to stay functioning. So it really was a big deal that we advertised at the time 
of the Merkaba being able to reactivate on its own. And now then the space is just held for that. People every day are reactivating their Merkaba fields without having to go through everything. But as you notice, whenever you order from us, you still receive that little card of the crystal Merkaba activation because it is an important part and an innate part of who we are is that Merkaba field. So if you want to do some energy work, that is a phenomenal place to start is the Merkaba activation. Um, and you just check out our resources page or our crystalmerkaba.com website. Um, let's see, Robert S. says, last week you, re you recommended a way to remove mold from house. Can you re recommend anything else to get rid of a skin fungal infection? And again, a, a mold is simply, we see a mold as consciousness. So it's a field of consciousness. And so as we raise the frequency and vibration of that, then it, it will either shift, it'll transform, or it will move out of that space. So the question is about a skin fungal infection, raising the frequency and vibration of the body. So when I start to notice that I have a virus, a cold virus, um, you're common basic coronavirus raise the frequency and vibration of the body so if i have a virus and for the past few years whenever i've called brendan i'm like help i think i'm catching a cold <laughs> i got too much to do to be down with the cold we raise the frequency and vibration of the body and to raise the frequency and vibration of the body you can use the tools of course but the tools will only get you so far you still have to do the work and that is going into the heart space bringing in your light because the highest frequency and vibration in this universe is the light your light your soul's light so you bring in that light and you expand that through the body now you can also work with a skin fungal infection by just raising the frequency and vibration with a ring um but yeah, that's, that's how we shift lower vibrations and consciousness. That's how we shift consciousness. Uh, Sina and S is anchoring the column of light with the dragon or shaman's wand is effective and easy as the golden fire and light wand, which do you prefer our dragons and shaman's wands used mostly for healing purposes? So to, to answer the question about anchoring columns of light, um, really, I guess the easiest way I would say that is you don't need any wand to anchor the calm of light. But when we go out and we teach all over the world is we teach how to anchor columns of light by using the brass rods, the golden fire and light rods, because those ones are the ones that are containing that energetics and are the easiest to receive the attunement with. So once you are attuned to the golden fire and light rod, that longer brass rod, rod or the wand the golden fire and light rod etherically is what we attune to is that older than this universe tool that will clear timelines realities that will move geopathic geomagnetic closed portal vortexes that tool the golden light rod is what we attune to and attuning to something is simply knowing what it is and recognizing that energy, then you can bring that energy back in. So once you are attuned to that golden light rod, you can use the dragon's or shaman's wand as just a tool of attention for you to be actually bringing in that golden light rod to do the work. Now the golden fire aspect of it is the activation of the sacred heart, that trifold gold flame heart. That is the golden fire aspect of that golden fire and light wand. And so once you have that activation of the sacred heart, then you bring that into that field as well. So you can use a shaman's wand, but you are basically using this just as a, a, a tension holder for your intentions of bringing in that golden light rod and the golden fire. So again, the shaman's wand, the dragon's wand, you can do that just as well 
It's just the attunement and the activation. Um, now, as far as the question, which wand do you prefer? I actually prefer the dragon wand is one of my favorites um, because the dragon wand does everything. And I'm still playing with my silver shaman's wand here. Um, prototype. The shaman's wand is the same as the dragon's wand energetically. The shaman wand is just simply easier to carry. Um, with the dragon's wand, you can do everything the shaman's wand does, but it brings through also the energetics of the dragons. Working on a prototype that actually would contain the golden fire and light wand, shaman's wand, dragon's wand, fairy wand, archangel wand, <laughs> ascended master wand. Don't know yet. We're still playing with that concept. Um, but yeah, you can use your dragon's wand and shaman's wand to anchor light, but you just have to have the attunement and the activation. Uh, let's see, Kendall, please expand on using the personal harmonic trio with the ascension grid pyramid, the physical rings, not the etheric. Certainly. Um, so with the ascension grid pyramid, basically you can simply put the rings over top of the pyramid and it just amplifies it just like that it just amplifies it um, to me that's pretty intense so putting the rings over it is my preferred way you can also place the rings underneath of it um, people have often asked me about hanging it and you certainly can hang it it may be off balance but you can get the balance right with the rings but um Really, these guys are not necessarily putting out a focal point of energy. These guys are more about creating an entire field that expands and radiates around the pyramid. So it does not matter the direction that the pyramid sits. Um, and using the rings together with it, I simply just like to put that set of rings over top of the pyramid because to me, it amplifies it greatly. Um, and I guess I'm not sure what else to say about it. <laughs> so, uh, Christopher, can the fairy wand be used in the same way as the regeneration wands? Um, no, actually the fairy wand is made with the golden fire frequency. So it's not going to create those, those bubbles, those fields that will clear miscreations. Um, the fairy wand, yeah, it's, it's the golden fire frequency. It is still a really fantastic tool. Um, but anyway, Jill, can the silver blue light pendant be mixed with other rings too? Um, so yes, and and Jill goes on to state that she has several rings from, from Maurice. And yeah, no, you can totally use any of our tools with any energy tools out there. Um, and they, they, they just harmonize together with any other tools. Uh, Christopher asks, do you see twin flames, one soul split into two aspects, masculine and feminine, is a real thing? Uh, I don't know. No. Twin flames. Don't ever see that a soul splits. Unless you go way up high, where we're all split from the same source. But we, I don't see that there is a soul that comes down hierarchically and then all of a sudden splits off into two souls in the same incarnation um, time and space you know we see that the soul splits and exists simultaneously in many spaces and places um, the twin flame thing um, to me is simply that you have soul contracts still that you guys have walked lifetimes together that you in, and you know, so let's say that none of us really know whether it's a split off of the same soul or not. Um, none of us can tell. I don't see it that way, but no matter what those people who are twin flames, they still see that they're, that they're so connected 
And that's because they have spent lifetime after lifetime with each other in, in doing those things that we do as soul family. And so I don't see a twin flame as nothing more than one of our soul family. That's how I see it. And, you know, people who talk about the twin flame thing, I know that most people who have the twin flame thing is in this lifetime, it's, it's kind of hell because they're going through and they're finishing up all this shit that they've been going through for all those lifetimes together of the soul growth and learning because we're, we're stepping away from that paradigm. Um, yeah, so twin flames I see as soul family. And I've met a lot of my soul family that are goddesses um, and cleared up many lifetimes of stuff with a lot of people. Um, do we have a lower self and a lower dimension reality or 3D human ego and duality at its lowest point we exist at? You know, we've actually seen um, that there are many lower dimensions than 3D. And, and we have... <laughs> We, we've worked with a lot of those lower density dimensions before. Um, and at the time, I thought we had cleared them, but I see that they're still in existence. But yet, it's hard to label it good or bad. It, it just is. It's, it's, a part of, it's a part of creation. Um, and do we as a soul exist there? I don't know. I don't know. I've never met one of my soul aspects from the lower dimensions, but I really don't know. Um, I've met soul aspects from pretty some pretty funky dimensions, some pretty funky soul aspects, which has been nice because then we've been able to go through and clear entire civilizations that way. Robert, how does the Ascension Pyramid work? By harmonizing the Ida and pinball channels in the middle Sasana channel or some other way. I do not know much about the terminology that you mentioned. Do you need to sit for a long time to feel the effects? So within the Ascension Pyramid, how it works is it is a high vibrating space of the quantum heart it brings in the remembrance of the quantum heart which is simply more of our soul it is bringing in that field of neutrality which we exist in in so many other places this universe of duality that we exist in and that we've been so ingrained in it, it basically pull helps to pull us out of there by being in those ascension pyramid fields so how the ascension pyramids work is that it is a high vibration space with all the connections to our soul and to creation as well as the connections to all these other higher fields that we then begin to remember and resonate into um in simplicity that's that's how it works um is there anything in the works or on the horizon to deter mosquitoes? Uh, right. Uh, so that's a tough one. So we've actually worked with people on clearing pests, like Japanese beetles from fields. But it wasn't in a way, um, and we've talked about this before, it wasn't in a way that we create something to push them all out and be like, Hey, you got to get out of here. You're, you know, whatever we create a space that is again, a high vibration space that may be uncomfortable for some that don't want to go into that vibration, but then we create a comfortable space as a draw, as a comfortable space for those beings to exist outside of our space. And that's how we did it with the Japanese beetles was we created a push pull effect. We, we made a, a space that just kind of pushed them out of the, the field, the, the, the field, the crop field, the agriculture field. And then we created a space outside of there that drew them. Um, so you can do that through your own intentions, placing it into, a harmony generator or into your Merkaba field 
or into columns of light or into grids that you create. You can put that into that space, that intention. But if you do put that intention into any of these space and you work with those mosquitoes energetically, treat them with unconditional love, with respect, with an honoring. Um, that's what we do with viruses too. You know, we, we see a lot of viruses that we've encountered over the years as, because even science will say that viruses make physical changes within the body, within the DNA. And so whenever I've had a virus and I've been down with a cold or a flu or whatever, I give gratitude. I say thank you for, for your work, for coming in and doing the work that I needed. Um, so mosquitoes, just, you know, see them as, as benevolent beings, but just ask them to not be in your field. Do you produce larger version of the silver rings? No, we have not made the larger silver rings yet. The largest silver ring we make is the two or is the two inch um, golden fire ring. And that's out of an eight gauge. And that's, you know, playing with silver, we, it's, it's an expensive adventure playing in, in, in the silver. So we have not made larger rings as of yet. Um, do I have it here? Yes. This is the largest tool that we've made in silver. It's a three inch regeneration um, tensor field generator. That is about the biggest tool that we've made in, in the solid silver. And that's just a single prototype there. Uh, Jill says, I have a talking nice pendant that I've been keeping away from the tensor tools. If I buy a two inch golden fire generator, the energy of that would surely go through the pendant, even from a distance. Is there a way to keep the pendants programming to be sure it will stay if the tensor considers it good? Um, you know, basically, yes. If you, if you get the, the golden fire generator and you bring it into your space, you can just ask that it leaves your pendant unaffected. You know, you can just put that intention into things within your field because we as the human and the creator, we can either just let things happen as they would on that energetic plane, or we can put our intentions in there. And again, just because we put our intentions into there, into that space, into that field, doesn't mean that's always going to come out how we look. It's always going to come out how the soul perceives it to be in the highest and best. So, you know, to me, and, and even if you took your tachyon um, pendant, say this tachyon pendant, and you put it with a ring, you can be ensured that this field, because it is working with your higher soul self, is only going to do what is in your highest and best with this tachyonized pendant. If it is there in the highest and best, then it will stay and be amplified. If it's not there in the highest and best, then it may be cleared or else not cleared, but definitely harmonized as long as it is within that field. Um, Samson, hey there. With the quantum gridding of three template, would it be possible for myself to access this template for the tools I create and give away? Right. Now, Samson makes pyramids. That I don't have an answer for, Samson. I've been actually considering that, too, that if I was to send out these pyramid molds for the 60-degree pyramid, if that would be enough to expand this grid to me right now no because i don't know how to share this template because this is not necessarily a, an etheric template as we know it um, that there is not just a standalone template in this little pyramid because it's 60 degrees and it has our specific crystals minerals in it this is functioning because it is connected to all of the other ascension pyramids 
the other ascension pyramids are holding space for this to exist. Um, so yeah, Samson, I would love to be able to figure out how I can send molds of the 60 degree pyramids to organite makers and have them expand on this field as well. So that's definitely something in the back of the mind here. And thanks Samson for the support and creating. Um, Bill, please discuss the center point of a quantum grid point. Does grid shape, square, circle, etc., affect a given center point's energy? Okay, so Bill's asking about um, the gridding with these. So Bill, hold that question. I'll hold that question until the very end here. Then we'll talk um, a little bit more about the quantum grid points. And I'll just tell everything that I can think of on these. Um, Jill, if when meditating and right before sleep and on waking with eyes closed, I consistently see a glowing blue counterclockwise swirling cloud of light Saw it as a six-pointed star once. Could this be the Merkaba? It could be. Um, to me, Jill, it seems like it's more of a portal. Um, you know, on a beneficial portal. It feels good. But to me, it feels more of a portal than your Merkaba. Um, I think you should do your Merkaba activation and see what happens and see if that shifts how you interact with it. That'd be, uh, yeah, that'd be my suggestion. Um, and let's see. Christopher asks, when you noticed the quantum grid had come online, did you observe a shift in mass consciousness or the earth? You know, um, I noticed a shift within myself when we created the that, that quantum grid. Um, yeah, I, I noticed a shift in myself. And um, for those who have been doing the grid work, and um, they shared that with me, I could notice a shift in those areas such as LA County. Um, and we'll talk again more about the grids here in a moment. Um, Christine, have I heard of Royal Raymond Rife? Um, yes, I've heard of the Royal Rife frequencies. He was curing stage four cancers with frequencies. I use his frequencies with my clients and your tools. That's fantastic. Yeah, the Rife frequencies are a phenomenal thing. And yes, you're right, using the, the tools, using the tensor fields along with those right frequencies is phenomenal. Um, I used to use the, the Spooky 2 frequency generator along with the radionics. Um, and within that, they, they did share some of those right frequencies. But yeah, no, that's phenomenal stuff. And working with the tools, like all transmissions of that style, we see that it lessens your broadcast time and makes the makes the work that you do with frequencies even better because it is when you are doing the work with somebody and let's say you put somebody within the field of the harmonic creation field trio and you are doing the frequency um, with them then you're not only doing the frequency with the human and a few of the soul you know and a few of their energy fields you're doing the frequency with them as they exist more than just here because it is bringing it is transferring that energy into much more of who they are um, so with radionics and frequency emissions that is great to use the tools uh, let's see and then bill is asking please talk about how the presence of twisted say studios has affected buffalo gap washington dc etc um well we have our own little localized reality here that's for sure um, you know, we never see chemtrails. We, uh, of course, never see them anywhere I go, which is kind of nice. Um, how it affects the, how, how all these energies affect everything and everybody. It's kind of like when people tell us about how they get a golden fire generator 
and they or even the harmony generator and they talk about how it affects their entire neighborhood or how people will wear a pendant and people treat them differently people will then look them in the eye people will have a better interaction with them um, when wearing pendants um, that's been a, a common occurrence and then also for like the generators that are in that larger environmental space people talk about how neighbors become nicer how the the drug dealers leave how um, you know just all these things shift within their neighborhoods um, so as far as how these tools shift the world to me it is huge and the reason that we are doing this and also the reason that I'm so flipping excited about grids about the quantum heart grid um, Jill is it beneficial to wrap colored cotton yarn around tensor rings um you know working with color is yeah no you can totally do that because you're basically working with color frequencies um, and there are people out there who do use the tensor rings in conjunction with uh, color and um, because color is is a frequency as well and it does great things um, how is the etheric template process done do the tool makers meditate with them to attain to attach templates specifically fairy wand process would be interesting to know how it's done so the etheric templates are it is a higher dimensional space that um, all of our tools exist within it is found under a pyramid in a pyramid under a dome and there are all these beings that we work with that are there the guardian of those tools is heimdall Heimdall is our guardian of the Aetheric Templates. He's an Arcturian, um, pretty phenomenal being, powerful being. And he is the one that ensures that nothing is ever tampered with, that our Aetheric Templates stay clean and clear, non-hijacked, everything else. Um, so we teach people, and there is that, um, you know, when I, I, actually, I did a video a few years ago um, for teaching people how to anchor in a three templates when they're making the tools and then also there's the video the light anchoring 3.0 which we also teach people i think it's on that one where i give people the measurement for the standard standard 202 con unit and walk you through anchoring in that golden light rod into that straight line measurement um, it's simple as being in the heart space and you either connect with heimdall or myself to be able to draw from the etheric templates to put it into that measurement that simple um, and then the process of making the fairy wands now that's a fun one that's one of my favorite ones to do so when i get a 46 foot piece of wires how long of a wire i use and i fold it in half and i sit there in the drill and i'm here in the studio and you know i in the space when I twist that wire with the drill and holding the space, I hold the space for all the fay to come into that field of that wire. And that is really fun doing the dragon wands and the fairy wands because you can just see the fairies flying around that wire as it's being twisted in that field. Um, really a cool thing. Excuse me. So. See none. Before the Heka or Infinity bracelet, you used to wear a tensor generator on your arms every time. Is there anything special reason for not wearing it anymore? Yeah, I tell you what. I wore, always wore a tensor field generator on my wrist because it helped with carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, rotator cuffs. I mean, because using my hands like that, it's... Uh, I needed that on my wrist and so then after once the golden fire came along I always wore a golden fire generator on my wrist um, and I you know if I go without it I just couldn't do the work as well they they, they would just hold the space for for me on the physical um, so once the bracelets came along the heck of clasps um, which I just haven't wore a heck of clasp in a while, but when they first came along, yeah, I would wear several heck of clasps. 
um, at a time. And to me, wearing a generator is actually a little bit more powerful for that work that you want to do for, for your physical. So if you are having issues with, you know, like anything in the physical, arthritis, whatever, you know, I'd suggest a generator because it is a lot more potent um, than the HECA clasps. But these guys are pretty flipping phenomenal. Um, the, the infinity bracelets. And so, yeah, I just wear the infinity bracelets now in place of the generators. Um, to me, the infinity bracelets are doing the same thing as that golden fire generator does for myself. And it's a lot more comfortable and they look cool. Um, but you know, the heck of clasps are still pretty flipping phenomenal. Um, to me though yeah wearing a generator is more potent than these and these guys to me are about the same as the generators uh let's see robert how how might one deal with people who are stubborn controlling strong-willed to improve communication and understanding <clears throat> just be in your heart space you know it's it's that's that's the best thing i can say is to be in your heart space all the time when you are working with people in that fashion. One thing that you can do is do that infinite heart, which is just simply, I use my hand to make this infinity. You don't need your hand. You can just visualize this flow of this infinity that goes between your heart and their heart. When we do this infinite heart process with another person, we are not, um, we're not sharing junk. We are going heart to heart. So when you are in your heart space, you do that infinite heart with somebody that brings them more into their heart space. That brings their soul more into the physical. And then you can start working with them. Another way that you can work with them is soul to soul. Go into your heart space, have a discussion with them. Do any of the energy clearing. So if you are in your heart space and you can see them as a soul standing there, just imagine them and then just keep connecting hearts and do, you can do that with the intention of clearing away those things that no longer serve the old soul contracts, the old programs, because nothing is, you know, there's a reason that, that person is even in your awareness or in your life. Um, and so you've obviously had some dealings with before or else they were there to help to, um, you know, clear away those old things or to teach you lessons of right now, which again, just going soul to soul with the person. Uh, Christopher, I handed the dragon wand to my dad without saying anything, though he knows about tensor rings. His whole being shifted massively clearing re realities automatically. My question is, does this wand create a field around us automatically or do we have to intend while wanding? No, you can, so the question is, if the if you can basically passively use the dragon wands or the shaman wands, totally. I just carry my shaman wand on my person and that's the same with the dragon wand. You can just have it on your person and it's going to be creating that field. It's going to be connecting into the heart and it is going to be bringing the soul in more, just like what the little golden fire infinity on the end of the dragon wand does. It brings that heart soul connection more into the physical. And then from there, then that rest of that field, um, it's just going to do the work automatically. So yeah, you don't have to have knowledge or intentions truly to receive a lot of the benefits of these tools. And of course, once we add our own light and our intention, then, you know, it, it empowers it more. Um, and Christopher, can you tell us more about those civilizations and what happened when you cleared? Oh, cause he was talking about the twin flame and soul contracts. No long stories. Um, as Christopher said, maybe someday I just need to do a story time and tell all these old crazy things that have happened to us through the years in the ethers. Um, and Sinan, do you, 
do you, do you have a chance to work with ruthenium metal? No, actually, I have never even heard of ruthenium. Um, yeah, it's unless they make a wire out of it, um, then we probably will never work with it unless we decide to make our own wire manufacturing smelting place, which I've often considered making our own copper wire. Uh, Jill, do you know a way in this life to prepare to stay at source when we eventually get there and not return to 3D Earth lives? So many accounts say that the beings there made them come back here. Well, so the cycle of reincarnation, um, I can tell you what I know is like, we do know that there used to be a lot of dragons on this planet. And when they died in the physical, they were forced into reincarnating into human meat suits. And because when you incarnate as a dragon onto this planet, you lose soul codes and these cold codes help you through the reincarnation and moving on to other universes. And so the original ascension chambers we created were actually downloading these soul codes so that those who were stuck in a cycle of reincarnation, um, and again, that's seeing things from a midpoint, stuck in a cycle of reincarnation. Your soul, that higher connection source, has kind of a say in everything. This middle thing that I'm talking about, about being stuck in a reincarnation, is just the, the duality, the, the, the nature of this universe. But in reality, where our soul perspective is, we're not stuck. We're never anything against our free will or against the will of the soul. Um, but anyway, um, with this soul code completion, then we were able to see that these beings who were stuck in a reincarnation cycle were then able to leave after this, this incarnation, if their soul so chose. Um, now, as far as those of us, or, well, some of us who used to not want to ever come back here again, and I keep hearing people talking about that, I want to go home. No, what we should do is we should empower ourselves and make this home. You know, this really could be and will be this will be a phenomenal space to be incarnated. It is now from the soul perspective. Right now is a phenomenal time to be here from the soul perspective. From the human perspective, yeah, we're still deep down in the, in the mire and have been for all these lifetimes. But, yeah, it's, I see that one of these days here, we're going to be like, wow, yeah, this is home. I don't want to go anywhere else. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's, that's about all I, you know, that's about all I know about it, Jill. Um, what I did here a while back was I decided that I want to stay and make this as better of a place as I can. And everything that we do right here, right now is affecting that. I tell you right now, we are in a huge time. And we as a soul and as a higher being are creating these new timelines. And I cannot wait to see how things are going to begin to shift. And they will here within the next couple of months. I totally believe that. Because we have been clearing so many of those old timelines, those old realities, clearing off old lifetimes of stuff. I mean, it's been a huge thing for all of us the past few years on this clearing and for the collective these past few months. And to me, that's really what all this stuff is about this year in 2020 is, is about the release because I've seen people go through and go through the work that we've done for years and it takes them two weeks to do because the space is being held for the collective. Um, so have heart. Renard, I have my golden fire generator on my ancestor altar. What if any benefits does having it there serve? Um, so for the ancestral stuff, the DNA stuff, um, 
Yes, totally. We can do all that clearing work, you know, and having your golden fire generator there on your ancestor altar is a perfect place to have the intention of not only connecting them, but also holding the space for them to release the things that no longer serve. Because really, we truly are in this space of time. But really, there is no time. When we step up beyond that, there's no time. All this happens in a blink of the eye. So the past, we can affect the past right here, right now. That's what our good friend at Healing the Handbook, that's what those guys do too. They go into the past to put changes there that then affect our right now. That is what we're doing when we're doing our clearing of our past lives and everything else is we are changing the past. And that's what we're doing with the ancestral stuff, the DNA heritage stuff. Um, all of that is important work. Uh, does the golden fire generator or golden fire and light wand or silver blue light pendant shield from others negative emotions, such as an example for protecting from empaths? So really what creates the the filtering for em, for empaths, the filtering, um, one, yes, the coil pendant, you know, it creates that field that we always call the empath filter. But all the tools and basically what the empath filter, the coil is doing is this bringing our light more onto that field outside of us. And it is that our light that is acting as that filter. It, it's transforming the energies that come in. So yes, any of these tools, when we are wearing them, they are simply helping us be more expansive in our light and anchored in our light to where um that stuff that comes in and uh the negative emotions from others that it will filter that out more it'll transform that more before it comes into our field and you can actually just set that intention into your field is that you that your field itself will transform that stuff that you do not need to have that comes from others. Um, again, being an empath is, it's a gift and something that we all are to various extents, but um, we don't need to accept in all the crap that doesn't serve us. And again, perhaps using a Merkaba field that you program can help assist with that too. If the silver infinity pendant is one of the most powerful tools at Twisted Sage, what is the most powerful and also what is the most powerful of the wearable tools? Um, so the infinite light pendant or the silver Taurus pendants are the most powerful wearable tools that we have. Oh, and these guys. They're, they're for wearable tools, it's the, the silver line of tools is the most powerful. What is actually the most powerful tool would be the Ascension Chambers, which we have put into the Ascension Pyramids of all flavors, sizes, varieties. These guys all hold the most powerful field that we are working with currently are the Pyramids. Uh, Christopher, I'm wondering about making a tool that doesn't just take us to the heart, but anchors us there so that not even our mind or rising emotions pull us out. Do you have any thoughts or visions on this? No. Um, to me, that tool would do us a disservice because the tools are there to help us. And we want to be able to shed all of our tools. We want to be able to walk on this planet naked without tools and to be okay and to be able to be in the heart and to transcend emotions. So kind of like the gateway pendant, the gateway pendant is one that just dredges up the shit. It dredges up the emotional stuff. It, it brings everything to the surface but it holds the space for us to release it. These guys are too. There's a little bit doing a little bit easier. 
They're helping us transcend that stuff. They're helping us rewire all of that stuff. So to me, the best tool, if we were going to have that as the end result, would be working with the pyramids in that field, not necessarily having to have a pyramid, but just working with that field of the quantum heart. Um, and in all the work that we do, the emotional release work, that just bringing in our light more, that is truly um, where we need to go. Hey, Nat, my good friend, are you still playing around with the idea of combining all the wands? Yeah, that was, <laughs> this is, this little guy's called Prototype. Everybody asks me, what's that thing called, Prototype? Um, still an idea of combining the wands. To me, this little guy feels just like the shaman's wand does. Um, I haven't really looked into him that much, but yeah, I still like the idea of combining all the wands into one. So we're, we're, we're still working on that one. Oh, uh, Jill, could intention be done with subliminals such as hypnosis? Um, I guess I don't understand the question there, Jill, um, to clear subliminal stuff in hypnosis. Yes. Um, first step is shutting off TV. Oh. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um, transcending it. Don't allow it to, to be effective. You know, people talk about, um, black magic and curses. So what we've always seen is that a curse will not affect you unless you accept it. There are some occasions, yes, where a curse, especially like a family lineage thing where your great, great, great grandpa accepted it and it still affects us. But basically for those out there who are doing curses and hypnosis and subliminals, um, we can be asleep and it'll affect us. We can be aware and ignited, lit up, and it won't affect us. We transcend that stuff, truly. Can we do the new meditation today, the one you said about in last week's 50 Question Friday? <laughs> you know, darn it. I was going to see about doing the Saima Diksha Blessing, but man, and changing that up, the whole Diksha Blessing, but we're not going to be able to do that one today yet. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do. We are going to do something real quick, though. Um, and God, we ran over time already. So the 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 grid pyramids. Um, I'll just talk really quick about these guys. When you are gridding, basically you are creating two points. In between these two points is the actual grid line that goes between and connects them. So when you have three points, you're creating on a flat plane a triangle. Everything within that triangle is within that healing field. It is. It's a phenomenal field. But for setting up your local reality grid points, and I call it a local reality, your local grid points is, is that basically you set up a triangulation. You set up three points in the least, your three points around your home or around your space. And when you set those grid points there, you are setting them with the intention of creating a space and creating a space of, of healing, of connecting, of manifesting, of, of creativity, um, you know, sky's the limit. Imagination is the limit of what it is, the flavor of the space that you wish to create when you set these grid points down around your space. And again, they can be clear out around the edge of your town. Um, and then somebody asked too about the intersecting of those. So I have a grid point, let's say that sits right here behind the camera, one here, one here. So then right here, I am standing right in the intersection of those three grid points, then, then yeah, then that, that intersecting spot is, it's, it's, it's a potent spot. Um, so the grid points, man, I really need to be able to talk more about the quantum grid points, but I need more experience with them and I need more feedback from you guys. Um, I'll tell you something right now is that our buddy out who actually, um, is the one who inspired me to create these mini pyramids and these grid points out in LA is um, he's gone through 
And, and he'll be sending some pictures that we'll post as well as a meditation that he does because before he's always used the light anchoring and gone through all these towers and created these grids of light anchors. Um, but I tell you what, when he sat these pyramids out and, you know, like on the right up on top of the Hollywood Hill um, in L.A., he sat the, the, the grid points to where they intersect all of those communication towers, the TV stations, the radio stations. And when he did and then he brought in those columns of light and they put their intentions in there for like broadcasting, you know, that quantum heart frequency, all of that man you could feel that shift and he said that even listening to the tv the radio that he noticed that there was that other quality of energy that came through those transmissions as well and and i felt that too um so i mean there's something with creating these grids and creating our localized intentions our local grids but then they also expand and connect to all of those grids um, all over the planet um, so hopefully next week i'll have a better handle on these and then we'll eventually do a, um, a webinar on them so the diksha i'm sorry that we're not doing it yet today We'll give this a shot next week and see if we can get the Diksha to come through. Um, I see Brenda just called me back while we were in conference here. And her and I were going to try to work on that this morning before the, before the webinar. But um, anyway, you guys, thank you for being here. Sorry again, we're not doing some cool energy work today, but... Let's do some cool energy work really fast. Let's bring these into your space. So, we have the grid set up. I'm gonna hold the space and help to transmit this space to you within your space. So imagine where you're at right now and you are going to imagine having these three, four, five, six, whatever grid points around your space, whether they're in the corners of your room, outside of your home, around your block, around your work. And we're just going to see if we can bring that field and see if we can anchor it there. We'll be able to bring that field in no matter what. But we'll see if that field can be held there. So again, just going into the heart grounding to the earth, connecting the source to creation. Okay, so actually I'm seeing this coming from you, not these grids, from you, the quantum heart. It's like the sacred heart space, except for it's higher. It's got more soul in it, more light. So just be, just receive, just allow the soul to come in with that quantum heart and expand that around your space. And once that's expanded, let's see if we can bring in these pyramids etherically just to kind of pin down that little space that you've created to hold that there. That space will hold as long as your attention is on it. And as long as you're in the heart space, and you're radiating the quantum heart. We'll see if we can just hold that there though, so that you can be within it. And it actually is more of a thing that you hold that space from your heart, from the quantum heart. 
I don't feel we're going to etherically pin that space there. That space has to come from you. But you can hold that space of that quantum heart. All right. Awesome, you guys. You know that space. You can get there as easy as going into the heart space, taking the three breaths, quantum heart, expanding out. It's a beautiful thing, you guys. We're going to change this world. All right. Till next week. See you guys then.